Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of All The Mod 6. How are you guys doing today? How's life? Do you know what is our biggest problem in this mod pack? We are not generating enough resources. And do you know why? I'll give you a hint. It's black and it's just behind me. Yes, the reactor from power. It is generating us 2100 RF per tick, which is nothing. So we need something more powerful. And just to clarify, I do understand that we have the bigger reactors in this mod pack. We have fission reactor from mechanism and also a fusion reactor. But for the moment, we're gonna go with power because that is a reactor which is easy to make and we can sustain it. The next tier of reactor is going to require something called energized steel, which is an alloy of gold and iron. Therefore, we are going to need an energizing orb and one energizing rod. And I think a hopper will also be nice. The energizing orb goes on top of the hopper, the rod goes over here, and if we give you one iron and one gold, very slowly we are going to get the energized alloy. There you go. We have two. I just noticed something very weird, so look at the map. Aha, uh -huh. it's weird. This was going so slowly that I decided to add two more rods and I think it should be faster. Yes, it is significantly faster. Our conduits are not the best and it's barely keeping up. I have done a crazy amount of crafting but I don't think we can make it yet. But let us see how many blocks can we make. 12. That's it. He's called Nate and he has a ton of armor. Okay, now I know why we needed the armor. And I have fell in lava. Very nice. I'm so happy that I did have the warp stone and I also had a ton of health. He also does a ton of damage. You're not getting any knockback and that's not very good. This is not fair. I was working. Go away. He's following me. We had a super food from the rats mod and that should save me. I hope. Come on, dude. Last hit. Oh, he dropped stuff. Feather Falling 5, Protection 5. It's not bad. You are garbage. I'm really hoping that those guys are not very common because otherwise we're going to have a lot of issues. I was in the middle of crafting. I ran out of iron. I came here to get some iron and there is a raid. But this time, I think we are geared up. <laughs> Well, at least right now, I can mine my iron. Whenever you want to make a reactor from power, you need capacitors, right? You need four capacitors in order to make four blocks. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio. My miscalculation was you need four ingots in order to make only two capacitors. So basically, in order to make 36, you need 72. And I ran out of iron, but we have it anyways, and we have the fuel. That was very close. No, no! That was a boss. I think. I just wanted to get a bucket of water. <laughs> we have to be very careful here. Anyway, we are not going to use this reactor to power our machines. We are going to use it in order to power a builder. Oh, it needs all the modium nuggets. Ooh, it's a good thing that we have them. So we have the builder. We need a shaped card. Then we need to upgrade it to a quarry card. Like so. And one more important thing that we're going to make is a filter. I have added the filter for cobblestone and stone, so it will not mine those. We're going to blacklist them, yes. Oh, and by the way, I did not add every single block. It's just the ore dictionary for stone and cobblestone. So let us go to the mining dimension and see if it works. First things first, we're going to set up the reactor. We give you water and the fuel. There is an auto mode on the reactor, which is very useful. So if you turn it on, the reactor will stop whenever it's full and it will start again whenever it has less than 70% energy. And basically what that means is that it's going to self-regulate itself without a need of a computer. We put the chest on top, filter goes in. Oh, we did not need a filter. Ew. Okay. Yeah, actually we do need a filter because now it's not going to mine them. If we use the quarry card, it's going to void them after mining it. So can you show me a range? And just in case you're wondering, here is the dimensions. 256 by 75 by 256 offset by minus 38. I'm just not sure how much RF it's going to require. Are we keeping up? You're getting cobblestone. No, no, no. Actually, we're just gonna void it here. Maybe we do not need the filter. I don't know. Okay, now it's giving us the ores. 
Nice. And obviously for the moment I cannot make a silk touch quarry because it needs a nether star. And dimensional shards. But this is fine by me. It's relatively fast and we're not consuming that much RF. I think we can also increase the range to 512. Yeah, it is generating a decent amount of resources and maybe if we have an ender chest it will be much better. The issue is that they are relatively expensive. We need more blaze rods. It's fine. Maybe we can go to the fortress and get a few blaze rods. Okay, so I did manage to make two ender chests and unfortunately, this is the storage that it gives us. Nine slots. And that's it. This place is chunk loaded and I'm going to give extra fuel for the reactor. We're just gonna use a hopper because we don't see it anyways. How do I take them home? <laughs> it's a stupid amount of resources. So processing these resources on its own is going to be a challenge, but at least for the moment, we're not worried about resources. And that's the good part. Look at the recipe for a charge pad from Mechanism. I needed to make a configurator and we need polished blackstone pressure plates. I'm very happy that we have some. You are charging up. Very good, very good. I don't really know what to do with the ores for the moment, so we're just gonna dump everything inside the chest and then we'll see what we can do. And I also made some upgrades, so iron gold and diamond. Thanks to the quarry, we're filthy rich, but there is a problem. Can you notice it? There's absolutely no certus quartz, and I don't know why. We also have only 26 gold and like six stacks of iron, which doesn't make any sense. We even have more iron in the ender chest, so I don't think it makes sense. In any case, if you have seen any videos regarding the updated version of mechanism, you must have heard about the nutritional liquefier, or at least the canteen. The way that I understood this is that you're going to give it some sort of food, it makes loud noises, and depending on how much saturation the food is going to give you, it will give you nutritional paste. And you can drink it instead of food. Which I think it's really neat because we just need to carry this canteen and we don't need to carry food. Anyhow, let me try to tidy up our machine area and I'll be right back. It has been a while later and I did manage to make a few changes over here. First off, we do have a machine area. It's nothing too fancy, it's basically the same machines that we had but I just configured them so that I have to do less manual work. Everything is hooked up to item pipes which goes inside an ender chest and I do have another ender chest with an import bus which imports everything to our ME system. Basically what it does is that it will make making alloys and everything from mechanism much easier. I also added the sawmill so that we get a better yield on wood and I upgraded our reactor to hardened which at full capacity it's going to make us around 17,000 RF per tick and after I spent a lot of time trying to make the hardened reactor again I noticed we skipped one the basic which would have been much cheaper because I was seriously confused that why does the second tier of reactor makes eight times the power of the starter one. You might also notice a lot of lanterns nearby and this is because of Nate. I don't want to see him again. Well, at least not in our immediate vicinity. Oh, and by the way, one more thing about the canteen. So let me just eat one bread. We are missing one and a half hunger bars. If I drink from the canteen, you might notice that we did not gain that much saturation. And the reason for that is it will restore saturation based on the amount of hunger bars that you're missing. And basically what that means is that it's really good if you're missing a lot of hunger, but it's not very useful if you're missing like two hunger bars because you will not get that much saturation. There is a nutritional upgrade for the mecha suit which is new in mechanism but unfortunately making the mecha suit is incredibly expensive. We need HDPE and we need polonium which is essentially nuclear waste which we don't have. Anyways, since I noticed that there is an add-on to Botania, I really want to get into Botania to discover what is new and we need to go on a very small adventure to gather some mystical flowers. So we are going to make a flower pouch and one purple sleeping bag. One more thing that I wanted to try and get was the mob imprisonment tool so that we can bring some creatures back to our base. The problem is it's going to require plastic and a gas tier. Getting a gas tier if you have relic quarry in the pack is not that difficult. There you go. And the plastic does not have to be from industrial foregoing. It can be from the rats mod, which we get it from garbage. There you go. And here is a mob imprisonment tool. Unfortunately, we can only make one because we don't have enough gas tears. Everything in Botania needs mystical flowers. How do you get them? Well, you pick them up in the wild. It's a very manly job and I'm not afraid to show my face. And since we have the flower pouch, whichever one we pick up, will go inside automatically. And if you do not want to go around the world in order to find them, you're going to need a floral fertilizer. The reason that I did not craft it is because I don't have that much bones. So what we're going to do is that we're going to try and find a few of them and the ones that we cannot find, we will use the floral fertilizer. What is this? Are those pumpkins? Oh yeah, <laughs> they are pumpkins. Nice. I had no idea that they have a pumpkin biome. I was thinking which mob should we take home, a cow or a sheep? I'm thinking we take a chicken. They give us feathers. Since we are going to start with endo flames, brown ones, 
are the most important one. We do not need a very fancy setup for the moment, so I'm just going to put our Petal Apothecary over there, Infinite Water Source, and there you go. And I think the best thing to do is that we're going to start with four pure daisies. This is the first, two of them are going to be for living rock, and two of them will be for living wood. And there you go, we already have them. I was hoping that we have all the flowers for end of lane, but we're missing the red one. We did not get it. Oh come on, give me a red one, please. Nope. Yes, we have it. So again, for those of you who don't know, you can plant the petals, bone mill them, and then shear them. And you will get more petals. And here is our first end of flame. I have absolutely no idea why I made 12 end of flames, but I did make 12 of them. So I had to make two mana spreaders, and we're gonna put them over here. And we're going to focus them into the mana pool, like so. Put six of them for you and six of them for you. And if we give them some wood, they should start making mana. I just need one mana steel, that's it. And can we also have two mana glass? Yes. I wanted to make a hovering hourglass, which is basically a timer. Oh, I already had some mana steel. Maybe we got it from a chest. And of course, it's not going to be a fancy automation, but we are going to have a dropper over here. We're going to give it a lot of coal. The hovering hourglass goes over here. We give you eight sand, so that's eight seconds and one redstone. You should work, right? Yes. Maybe eight seconds is too much. Uh, we have 12 flowers. We go like every four seconds? Yeah, I think four seconds is fine. So again, we're not going to go that crazy today. We're just going to start with a few basics. And I think getting a Sojourner's Sash and a Band of Mana will be a good start. We just need to make a Rune of Air and I'm hoping a purple carpet is acceptable, which it is. And one Rune of Earth. Of course, the Sojourner's Sash is not going to work on its own, so we are also going to need a band of mana, like so. And here is the Sojourner's Sash. I also have a Black Lotus. It's not much, but, you know, for some reason we have two belt slots. I'm confused. But this is nice, we can jump higher, we can run faster, and we do have step assist, which is really good. I know I said we are not going to go that crazy, but I need a few more trinkets. You know, like Rod of the Shifting Crust. And of course the Benevolent Charm, so that we don't get creepered. And if we had some melons, we could have made the Pyroclass Pendant, but I don't have melons. There is a stupid mineshaft next to our base, and I was thinking maybe this one has melons? No. I came to villagers, unfortunately we only have pumpkins. Well, it does seem that I'm an idiot, and we do have the market. This time we're going to be extra careful, so that there are no accidents. He's safe, right? Yes. Very good. Who put spikes over there? I don't have any, but at least we have melons. It took ages for the melon to grow, but we do have the pendant, and that is good. We have a little bit of fire resistance if we go to the nether. But in the meantime, I also noticed that we have a decent supply of mana, so why don't we also make the elven portal? And then after getting the elven portal, we will call it a day for Botania. Cause the thing is, I have made all the ruins, and we just need to make the plate, and that's it. One spark goes on you, the other one on you, and we start making our first terror steel. Yes, we have it. We don't have that much mana, but at least we can make the gateway key. We need two pylons, the gateway, and of course, the portal. We don't have enough mana, right? Yeah, unfortunately, the amount of mana that we have is not enough to activate the portal. Okay, I can wait. In the meantime, I was thinking that since we have apotheosis in this mod pack, we can get very good enchantments for our sword. We do not have the capacity to have a level 50 enchant, but I'm guessing if we put you inside, we will get something good for the sword? No. Sharpness 3 was not the best, but this is not pack 2. And Sharpness 4 beheading 3. Tome of Weaponry will give us Life Lich 2. And knock pack 2. And the second one gave us Unbreaking. This is very weird, we can have Sharpness and Smite on the same sword. I'll take it. When you have apotheosis, you can make different types of tomes for different purposes. So for instance, a tome of the archer will only accept enchantments relevant to the bow. Tome of chest plates only accepts chest plate enchantments. And this one is a tome of miners. What will we get? Unbreaking and excavate two. What the hell is growth? Oh, that's for the hoe. Okay. Efficiency three and unbreaking three. Good. I repaired our paxel and we're going to put excavate three. So you should be able to mine a bigger area, right? Yes. I was going through the JEI and I did notice that we can make creative items in this mod pack. For instance, the creative energy cell, or the creative compressor, the creative mana pool, and the rat upgrade. So we do actually have to get into Botania and also some other mods, which I have no clue what they do. For instance, elemental craft. 
Elemental Craft has a guide, so let us try and learn it together. It is telling us to get inert crystals. We are getting a lot of that from our quarry, so that's not going to be a problem. Why don't they stack? This is weird. Then it is telling us to make a contained crystal. Okay, here is a contained crystal. Lesson number three is that we have to find element sources. I have seen them, a lot. Yeah, there's one literally over here, and that is air. Okay, it seems that in order to craft anything in this mod, you need a lot of contained crystals. So let's make a few. I'm not sure if I understood this correctly, but we are going to need an element extractor and one small element container. So if I put the container over here, the extractor over here, will you extract the elements? Oh yeah, we're getting air and it's full. <laughs> okay, there is also a bigger container, but unfortunately I don't think we can afford it at this very moment. So let's make a few containers, the small versions, and we should probably start looking for more sources. This is air. The main issue is that they're not as common as you would think. I've been walking for a while and nothing. And the moment I said that, I did find another one. Okay, this one seems to be earth, right? It's green. And I'm hoping we can use the same extractor. Yes, we can. Good. And we just mark it on the map, just in case. It seems that there are four elements. One of them is air, earth, fire, and water. Yeah, honestly speaking, they're not that common. That one is also air. Oh, this one is fire. And it's near our base. So the final one that we have to find is water. I'm also not very sure. Do they run out? What are you? The mod also seems to have some issues and you have to be really close in order to notice them. This one took me half an hour, but I think I have found it. We just remove the blocks and we can use the container. Okay, now that we have a container of all the elements, what can we do? It seems that there is an item called element infuser and we just have to put it on top of the containers like this. And then we should be able to convert material into elemental craft material. So we have iron. If we put it on top of water, we will get drenched iron. So you go on top. Will you work? You're consuming a lot. Does this mean I have to go and pick up water every like five minutes? The mod itself does have an ore dabbling system, but it also has spells. And this is a spell table. The book is telling me that I have to put a paper over here and then right click with a stack of crystals. Where did it go? Oh, here. Scroll of Inferno. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, it's a one time use? <laughs> Why? And this one is called tree fall. So will you chop down a tree? Yes. Sorry for the noise. Also, you should not put excavate on your tools. It's really bad. Elemental craft has only one page in the JEI, but it seems to be more complicated than you would think because it also has fusion crafting. And I do not think that we would be able to finish everything today. So for the moment, let us try to get better containers and then we're done for it for today. But first things first, let us make a disenchanter and see if I can remove excavate from my Paxel because it's really bad. Oh, you need RF. Okay. I have no idea why you would need RF, but okay, fine by me. How do you remove enchantments? I don't think you can choose which one to remove, so we have to remove them all and then put it back again. Oh, this is going to be expensive and the anvil broke, but we're done. There seems to be something called element holders. You get them for different types of elements. So I made the one for air and let us see if we can get some. Oh, we can. Just have to hold right click for a very long time. And of course, the important thing is if we consume a little bit of air from here, can we refill it with the element holder? So maybe if we just use an extractor and put you on top? No, there seems to be a bigger container. So maybe we use this one. I just noticed that traveling to this location is not very easy. So maybe we just use a waypoint. Can we extract you now? Okay, good. Either the new container holds a lot of elements or this guy is dead because we're not getting any. Oh, we just got a little bit more. Okay, so it does hold a lot. That is good. In that case, I think we're okay. We can gather a lot of elements in the containers and we just have to chunk load it. And this time I did remember to bring a cow. In the meantime, I think we have gathered enough mana to activate the elven portal. I think this should be enough mana, right? Yes. And in order to always keep it open, we just need a pixie dust. We make a recessive augment and we put it on you. And we just add sparks over here. Now you should be fine. One more thing that I want to do. Oh, that is aqua. It's close. I did mark it on the map, but as I was saying, one thing that I want to do before finishing today's episode is to try and set up a coke oven. And I think if we do this, we will get bricks. Yes, because next episode we are going to try and get into mystical agriculture and maybe try to make some HTPE from mechanism. Therefore, having some creosote oil in order to make the garden cloches is not the worst idea because we're going to need a lot of treated wood. And of course, we're not going to automate it for the moment because we don't need a crazy amount. We just need a few garden cloches. And I forgot to check the recipe. Do you need something stupid? Yes, just a resistive heater, which is not that bad. 
In the JEI, I was looking for a trash can and it seems there is one from Rats mod, which is an achievement apparently. And if you look at the tooltip, it will tell you that if you throw away items, it will give you garbage. And I actually like garbage. It just makes a lot of noise. <laughs> and that's basically like a composter. Oh, and by the way, this is zinc and we don't need it for anything. And just out of extreme curiosity, if I put a logistical transporter over here and extract the items, Will it do it automatically? No. Maybe from the top? No. I was hoping that it works like a composter and we can maybe just put a hopper. Oh, a hopper works. Yeah, that's actually really nice. We have automated garbage. It does tell you that it will spawn rats on block. I just don't understand what that exactly means. So maybe we make another pile over here and see later on if we get any rats. I hope we do. Because there's also another block which will give us plague rats. And those could be useful. Anyway guys, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one. Bye bye.